<coughs> Mimi, let's go! Äh, Silly Hoon am Start hier. Mal wieder. Und wir sind auf sillyhoon.com. Natürlich dem gratis erreichbaren Server Laser Gurkenland. Ähm, <coughs> wir schauen heute uns einen Talk an von Junyu Tsuhu Web to Own Attacking Desktop Apps from Web. <coughs> Securities Perspective von der DEFCON 27 äh, von 2019 ist der Spaß. Hm? Also you need to. Let's go. You can see how we can pop up a calculator without reversing our binary exploiting knowledge. Uh, I'm Sosh, I'm from Princeton Security Film Lab, and I'm a member of whoops, the CDF team, and I have spoken at Zero Nights and Hit B. And my friend, Human, he also from Film Lab, and he is a speaker of Asia Sacrifice. And another friend, uh, he's from Tencent Shenmue Lab 2, he's a member of Stick Lover Security, and uh, he's spoken at Zero Nights and Hit B2. Uh, unfortunately, these two, these two guys doesn't come here. Okay. Uh, when people are talking about attacking desktop applications, you may think about Pong Yeah, hackers at Pong may we uh, use memory corruption but to get a calculator. I dream of that one day I can pop, pop up calculator just like that. But there's some difference between me and them. I know just know something about web security. I can do little reversing. I know nothing about punning. Can I pop up a calculator like people in the punto? Hmm. That sounds a good question. Yeah. yeah. And we notice more and more applications yeah. use hybrid technology. Uh, uh, people write applications use their use yes, frameworks like Python like or NW.js. So their applications can run at all the platforms. And web gelaufen. techniques are used in these frameworks, and they may use web techniques to develop their application. So that's a good news for our web, secu web security researchers. Yeah, we can use web security tricks to pawn them reliably. So let's see how to pop up a calculator, use web security knowledge. Let's keep web security great. <laughs> so let's start off from the attack surfaces. So today in this talk, we will talk about three sections. Uh, one is open ports, the second one is your theme, and the third one is some features of the application. Yeah. So we start from uh, when the application opens up port. So why do they open port? Maybe they open a port for the web server because they want to expose some API calls. And maybe they use the port for debugging and uh, many other purposes. And the application may bind the port on all the interfaces or on the local host. Yeah, on all the interfaces you can access them re remotely, but how, to, how do we access the port on local host? And the browser is our good friend. If the port, the service running on the port, accepts HTTP protocol or it has a tolerance of illegal commands, and then we can use browser to attack this localhost port. And before we come to the exporting, uh, let's see some basics. The sim origin policy. Yeah, we see that two pages have the same protocol, host, and port, and these two pages are in the sim origin. So. Oh, okay. Same Origin habe ich noch nie Steam wirklich gereiht, muss ich ehrlich gestehen. Request. 
and cannot get a response. So how this uh, this uh, basic restriction in the rules of there is there a way to bypass it? There comes DNS rebinding. So uh, the process is as follows. Uh, we first access the rebinder.com. It will resolve to an uh, attacker's ID and pull the, all the payloads from the attack server. And uh, in the browser, just you just wait with a few uh, with a uh, with a few minutes, and you request to find the call again. And then this domain will result to the target IP, uh, such as localhost. And uh, in the uh, and uh, uh, the port, the protocol, and the host are not changed in this process. So the browser believes they are in the same origin. So we can attack it, just uh, bypass the SOP. Yeah. So we need the, the uh, there are some prerequisites. The swap service should not check the host name because we need the uh, we need a domain name that we control, and the victim should wait until the DNS has changed because there is a patch in the browser. And there is a, uh, another attack method called CSRF. And there is some difference uh, about uh, CSRF and CS rewinding. We can use CS rewinding to bypass, bypass SOP, but if there is a host name check, it will fail. And if the client cannot wait uh, with a few seconds, and this may be not work. But, but for CSI, uh, it is restricted by SOP. But uh, it doesn't, uh, the host check doesn't matter, and it will be effective immediately. Yeah. So let's just go to a key. And it is a popular third-party plugin for WeChat. Uh, it is a popular chat software in China. Yeah. And it is called this WeChat plugin, uh, Mavo app. Uh, using this third-party plugin, we can keep the record message. We can also reply a message. And it has many users. You see it's many stars and many folks. But it does not maintain, maintain months ago. And it, ha it finds a port, a fixed port, on uh, localhost, and expose some APIs. For these APIs, you can get all the, all the user's friends, all the chat logs, and you can send any message to any user. And we can use DNS binding to attack this plugin. So we reported this issue to the author, and the author fixed with checking the host. Yeah, the host cannot be a uh, local host. Because of this host chat, we cannot use DNS rebinding to access them, but it is still affected by CSR attack. If, if we know a username, we can then use CSR to send a message to that user. Yeah, so it is not enough to just check the host. Because check the host, it just can just uh, keep DNS rebinding away. You should also use some unpredict unpredictable data or path to prevent CSRF attack. Also, most importantly, you should avoid using third-party plugins And there's another case called Xdebug. Xdebug is for PHP debugging. It's a PHP extension. So how does it work? Uh, uh, first, you should send a request with uh, this um, in parameters, Xdebug session start. 
just like that UI or in the bot, uh, the UI or below. And then the app spark will connect to a server. And this server can interact with the app debug. So which server to connect? App debug will check the following things in a four back order. The first one in the in the app debug's configuration file, the app debug remote host. If not set, then it will check X four D four header in the HTTP request. And if not, uh, X debug will use remote address. So, if we have these three configurations in the X debug, X debug remote connect back set to two, uh, X debug remote enable set to two, and the remote host is not set. And this is always met for most of the PHP developers. Then we can attack it using that rebind. We can set up a EVO server waiting for FDBug to connect and then use DAT rebinding to send a custom F4 data for header and points to the EVO server. So the EVO server will connect uh, we all uh, interact with the app debug, and finally we can get a real, real shell. And I have reported this to the PHP. So, if you are a PHP developer, if you use app debug, and you stays on the on a email page for 40 or, fi or 50 seconds, and then you may be hacked. So, how do the Actibug officially think about this attack? And his response with, he it thinks this is a, just a rumor. And for developers, himself should take care of this. this. Yeah. So anyway. And for Node.js debugging port or Java debugging port, uh, a Java RMI port, they may also be affected by that rebinding attack or setup attack. So if you find a port opened by an application, you can check it by some all interfaces or by some localhost. So you can choose to attack them remotely or using that rebinding or setup effort to attack them. And next part, you are schemes. It's a short part, yeah. Uh, people use URL schemes to launch application or send some messages inside an application. Uh, we can see the following picture. We can use where Okay, Leute, also ich verstehe irgendwie nichts, wenn ich nicht darüber schaue und mitlese. Ich weiß nicht, wie das euch geht, aber ich denke, das macht äh, nicht allzu viel Sinn. Uh, vielleicht ist mein Chinesisch einfach zu schlecht dafür, aber um, ja, ich, ich habe Struggle damit zu kommen. Dann, uh, wenn ihr den Talk sehen wollt, ist natürlich wie immer in der Beschreibung verlinkt. Junio Zu Web to Own Attacking Desktop Apps from Web Securities Perspective. Um, ich werde es jetzt mal abbrechen. Wir sind jetzt ein Drittel durch circa. Um, und das ist dann auch hiermit das Ende der Folge. Wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge.